Hello, Hustis. How y'all doing today? I'm going to hold my mic. <laughs> uh, I was challenged by uh, one of our Fab Five members, uh, Jazzy V, a challenge about 30 minutes of our past lives, whatever it uh, was. So, um, all the older uh, Hustis, I, I think some of you guys know my story, but the new Hustis, y'all probably didn't go back uh, 200 videos ago to know who and why I am who I am. So let me give you 30 minutes to learn me. Thank you, Jazzy Fee, for the challenge. Here's my clock, y'all. I'm going to start it now. You got 30 minutes. All right, y'all, let's start. My name is Juanita Hood. I have no middle name. Uh, I am a, a, a one of five children, two girls and three boys. Uh, my mother and father, uh, they fought a lot. And at the end, they um, really hurt each other. And um, yeah, that was the start of uh, my mother's life as a single mother. Now, y'all, uh, my mother... You know, over the years, we learned that she did not really like children. And uh, she had five of us, okay? And um, she was partial betwixt the uh, girls and boys. Uh, even though she didn't like any of us, the boys, she liked better than the girls for whatever reason. And then even in those days in the 60s, you know, we still was divided by black and white. And it's amazing that we're back there today. <laughs> but uh, I was not called by my name uh, in her house. My name actually was that ugly black bitch. And uh, or black bitch this or black bitch that. And uh, very, very rarely did I um, hear her call me by my name. Uh, my mother was a very uh, mean mother. Uh, she was very abusive with her whoopings as well. Um, yeah, so... Um, <sighs> Off of her hands, my childhood was really uh, bad. I'm not going to say it was really bad because a lot of people uh, took me into their homes. So let's get started. Uh, at the age of 13, uh, I, I was being, I was going to be 13. Uh, with the impartially of between the girls and the boys, uh, we had chores on uh, Saturdays. And so uh, I was uh, doing my chore sweeping the hallway. And uh, one of my brothers who didn't like me because he always heard what mother said about me, you know, and he wanted to treat me bad as well. Well, he stabbed me with a pencil. And with that, I put the broom down and I popped him. And so uh, I remember uh, mother was on the phone uh, with one of her friends and said, let me call you back. This black bitch didn't hit my son. And so uh, she went outside and she cut the clothesline. And y'all know back there in the 70s, that clothesline was just some wire that you hung from tree to tree. And so she came back in and, and uh, she whooped me with the wires and the wires were so thin that it cut my skin and with the webs and, and you know, it, it opened my skin as well. And uh, the more she hit me, the, the more the blood was coming in, my body seemed like it was on fire. I don't know what what my mind did. I, I, I think I went into an outer experience because when I came back to um, my mother's head was in my hands and uh, and I had, you know, put her head on the wall. And I think with that intense pain, I, I lost my mind for a moment. I, I just really believe that I have repented for it as well. Um, and that's the first day that uh, she uh, made me a homeless uh, little girl. Um, before that, um, yeah, I was just not her pick. 
<laughs> so uh, that night I was afraid, I was scared. I was crying because I'm thinking like, what kind of mother can do this to a little girl? You know, uh, I, I can say that, um, I'm trying not to get teary out. Um, the streets were scary, but not like today. I had to struggle. I have to uh, also say that um, God brought a lot of people to my rescue because, you know, there were many people that at least let me uh, sleep in their house or feed me for a day or a night. My survivor was going everywhere to sleep from pillar to post. And uh, yeah. Um, Yeah, it was hard, <laughs> and I did it for three and a half, four years. Um, I never took myself out of school. Uh, I always believed that uh, I would be better um, than what my family said that I would be, and that's why I am where I am today. Thank God for that. But um, the rapes and uh, the beatings, uh, from the hands of men, some who I trusted and some that I didn't know. Uh, my body went through trauma uh, as a little girl. Um, um, but I survived, you know. I... I struggled. I remember I wanted to eat, and I and and uh, we had this place called uh, Charlie Brown's uh, 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 Cafe, where it was a restaurant actually. And uh, uh, I lied about my age back then so that I can, you know, work at least part time, you know, to wash my clothes, to go to school, and to stay afloat. And um, They did give me a job and I was being paid uh, $2.15 an hour, but my tips were mine and you in whatever shift you can have one meal for free. So that was also saving grace for me because at least I can eat at least one time a day. And then of course, all the other coins, uh, monies that I made, I did go to the laundromat that I can have clean clothes to go to school. And um, I had gotten pregnant uh, at 13 and uh, I had an abortion. Um, the motel rooms, uh, sometimes uh, when I had enough of money, uh, motel, not hotel, motels, uh, back in uh, those days were very inexpensive because you know you can get a hotel you know by by night and uh, all hours that you know they i think i think back then you can uh rent a, a motel room for hours or even overnight and so sometime when i i've made enough money then that then you know i didn't have to wonder who would invite me in their homes um that uh i was able to uh spend money on a motel room that I can sleep and sleep well without wondering who is the next person that's going to um, rape me, you know. I'll never forget it was a, me and this other girl uh, that we met up and we went to school too and, and uh, from my mother's hands, she uh, was homeless as well. And uh, we had met these guys uh, in a downtown hotel, and uh, they um, approached us with this, you know, roll of money. And you know, we knew we needed some money. We knew we were hungry, and we knew we wanted somewhere to live and uh, or to stay at a night. And so we uh, we followed them uh, with that money, and uh, we didn't know 
exactly what was going to be, but it was a, 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 a orgy, if I could say that, uh, because it was four. It was three guys and two girls. And so they tricked us. And so at the end, um, when we got the money, it was a lot of ones and some fives. But underneath all the ones and fives, I think it was a couple of 20s, maybe. It was a, a, a ball of play money, y'all. So that was my first lesson. <laughs> you know, so I was like, you can't trust people. You just can't trust people. But that was an experience, y'all, uh, that I did endure uh, as being a homeless young a black girl as well. I also met a guy on my journey um, that... Uh, had a beautiful home and uh, I met him through some friends and um, um, he invited me in his home and I did not know what he would uh, have on his mind of course you know because he was a grown ass man and I still was a little girl I think at that time I was 14 and a half maybe 15 and I'll never forget, uh, forget that I was awakened uh, by a beautiful girl, tall, and she had on some very risque clothing. So uh, the guy came into the room and, and I told me that I was going to go out with her. And I'm like, out where? Mm -hmm. So he wanted to make me one of those street walkers. Mm-hmm. So he had me to dress up in these clothes and he took uh, us uh, to one of our big fancy hotels in our downtown Houston called the Hyatt Regency. And um, I'm like, what? even in the meanness of my mother's words, one thing she did instilled uh, in us for the few years that we lived in her house was... Uh, if a man cares about you, he not going to sleep with you in the back of his car. He going to give you a hotel room, you know. And if a man can't buy you nothing to eat, why you going to sleep with him? You know what I mean? She had said things like that. Well, I knew that even as a young, naive little girl that you want me to work for you and you want me to use my body to work for you and give you the proceeds yeah something wrong with that picture and i was glad that i was a smart girl you understand what i'm saying so all i thought was this okay you forcing me to do it you'll never see me again and and she was afraid that he was going to beat her up because i told her i'm not i'm not going back to that house with you you're a fool if, if you're going to do you and you're going to use your body uh, to be battered and abused by some other stranger that's going to jump in and out of you and you go back, you the fool. Even I knew that at 14 and 15 years old. You don't do that. If you're going to do that, do it for yourself. Benefit yourself. Because what are you going to get of that money that you give him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, anyway, y'all, I ain't go back. I got my ass on the bus. <laughs> I got my ass back on the bus. Yeah. And then let me tell y'all something else. I thought that, like, you know, I thought about being a cow girl. So I decided to go with a friend uh, to one of the prominent hotels and uh, turn a trick. Well, let me tell you how God worked on my behalf. I did meet somebody from Switzerland, though. Very nice guy. We stayed in contact for a long time, too. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that happened. And uh, I remember coming down the uh, off the elevator, and there were, like, four police officers uh, standing there. And so when I came out, when I got off the elevator, y'all, my heart was beating faster because they pulled me to the side. And so let me tell you what these officers told me. And I knew that it was God saving grace. They said, you shouldn't be here. This is not something that you should be doing. Now, don't ever do this to yourself. You deserve better than that. But if we see you in here again we're going to arrest you for prostitution 
And I said, thank you, but no thank you. And still, I was just this young, innocent little girl, uh, 14, 15 and a half at this time, I believe. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I got, I got, a, I got a good amount of money. That's right for that one dude. And um, I knew then that, okay, no, I'm not supposed to be doing that either. So, y'all, um, to fast forward, um, a friend um, of my mother's. Now, in them streets, y'all, I, ne I thank God I did not get on them drugs. I did smoke marijuana now. I, I, got, I smoked a lot of marijuana. I, I did take a few uh, uh, speed tablets, but they uh, made me too skinny. So I had to get off of those. I was like pen thin. I was like, oh, Lord, we can't do these. You know, I was a very smart young girl, though. I, I, I you know, I'm glad. And then I tried some syrup. That syrup made you go to sleep. So I know that wasn't for me either. But I did smoke marijuana for about 23 years because, you know, the, the you know, a, a, a good amount of years of my life, I did uh, data my very sexy, handsome Jamaican men. And, you know, they had plenty of it and I got it for free. So, you know, I smoked it for free. <laughs> but anyway, to fast forward, uh, when my, when I got out of um, homelessness, um, I, uh, went to this shelter to, you know, it was this, uh, program called housing, uh, housing authority or something like that. Well, I had met this person and, um, they told me about the program, but I had to go stay at a, uh, Salvation Army, a kind of place for women, uh, and then women and children in order to get a voucher. And, um, so I did that. And uh, I uh, was blessed um, to get a apartment under their program. Uh, but before then, I uh, was rescued by a friend of my mother's. Uh, they were high poker players, uh, card people. And he did uh, take me into his home because he didn't understand how a mother can let me, a uh, daughter, uh, you know, live on the streets uh, without a residence. So he took me into his house and then um, that's where I met my children's, my two oldest children's father. He lived down the road. And uh, we uh, had, you know, the, 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 the boys and um, he became very abusive to me, and um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like you. Don't you don't get to hit me, and I don't hit your ass back. You just, you just don't. And he knew uh, that if you hit me, I'm gonna get you. So one day, um, I was outside doing something in the yard, and it was something we had to talk about that we had a disagreement. And he slapped me so hard, I saw some stars and some monkeys and some bears <laughs> and I was like damn so when I got my sight back on my peripheral view I saw a hole a garden hole that is and so I got that hole I wore his ass out with that hole and the man that was mowing his lawn across the street came and snatched that hole out of my hand because uh yeah their father was gonna be a dead man in that front yard you don't put your hands on me you just don't do it but time had passed, and uh, I'll never forget, I was I was getting off of work, and I came home, and I was walking up the driveway, and in the front yard, there was a big old oak tree, or some kind of big old gigantic tree. Well, uh, as I walked, um, I remember I remember him falling off the tree. He had hit up in the front yard tree, y'all. Because he knew he gonna have to get me in the dark. Because in the two ways, in the light, I'm gonna get your ass back. Well, he came down on me out the tree at nighttime, y'all. And the of the thing I remembered was me going down and, and my head hitting that concrete, and of course that knocked me the hell out, you know. And he beat me uh, unnoticeably. Uh, when they found me. Um, I knew, I knew, I saw him falling on me. I knew who it was. And y'all better believe I sent his ass 
to jail and I wanted them to put him under the jail. You fucking coward. How do you do? How? Uh huh. So anyway, y'all, I uh, ended up having to move uh, because I knew whenever he got out, he probably would be coming after me. So um, I did move. Uh, oh, 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 I'll, I'll speed it up. So when I moved, I had the two boys. And so we, uh, and in order to be on this program, you had to work because they would pay a portion of your rent. So I went and found these apartments. Um, uh, and uh, I got, I, I had gotten fired from my job. So uh, I remember that his mother, the, 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 my children's father's mother had called me and wanted to see the children and I'm like well she can like babysit until I find another job but then I thought twice about that and I'm like no I'm looking at the clock y'all and I'm thinking like yeah that ain't that's not a good idea because because you know if he should come home then I may not get my boys back you know what I mean but anyway uh my childhood life dealt me a lot of hardships y'all uh, I did. I never got caught up. I I never got caught up to to still be a, out there walking, or even uh, being you know uh, missing any body parts. Or you know I I have a sane mind. I'm not crazy. You know I don't take no happy pills. I don't take no pills at all. And I, I got good health. Um, but I I often wondered um, why my mother hated me so. But I'll never forget I was going through my transformation of God when he was healing me. And the spirit told me to go in and forgive her. And so I remember calling her and asking her if I can come and visit. And she said yes. So when I got there, you know, I did just what the spirit said. I, I stood in front of my mother as intimidated as ever. And I told her, I forgive you for what you've done to me. And now I can forgive myself for hating you. And um, yeah, she really gave no response, but, but she did say, okay, Juanita Hood. And I'm like, okay. So I turned around and I left out and I went back home. And um, the relationship me and my mother have today, I do spend a lot of time with her because she's still my mother. And um, sometime I, I, I say, you know, even back then, did anyone really know how to be a good mother? Because surely I know I've made mistakes being a young mother as well. But me and my boys have really good relationships, you know. And they know that uh, I love them to the moon and back. But I'm glad that I was able to uh, share this story. I know I've left out a lot of pivotal points, and that's because I, I, I earlier, I, y'all, as y'all saw, I was about to start crying, and uh, that's not something that I wanted to do. But to share just a portion of my life uh, is a wonderful thing because somebody can learn from other people's past and we all have a past so never be ashamed uh to say your past you know i've, I've been through the hardships y'all i lived the, the uh, a life out there with no families and with, without no guidance uh without no one teaching me how to be a lady and you know everything that i learned i did learn the hard way and i learned on my own and that's why today i can speak the way i can that's why today i can smile that's why today i am a very strong individual and i'm a very strong black woman and i do have a plan and a purpose that i live for god as an encourager every day and uh so you know with that uh i am glad to be in the company of the people whom god has brought into my life now if you want to ask me anything uh you know in the description below you know don't hesitate because i am an open book and i do plan on writing one my life uh, is just a, you know, has made me to be a living testimony and uh, for many people. And so I really don't mind sharing. I know people will say, you know, um, 
how did I eat? I ate when I can. I I, I do I, I do. Well, I can say that I went to an area of Houston where uh, it was a lot of poor people at the beginning. Um, and uh, with that said, you know, black people uh, in Houston are, is very giving people. And a lot of people did allow me to come in and take a shower. Different people uh, would, would, would offer me some things to eat. And, you know, and, and it was good. And um I think, I, you know, I don't remember all of them because, y'all, I was 13, 14, 15 and a half. Yeah, because I had my first child when I was 17 and I was already out of homeless, homelessness. So, yeah, um, a lot of uh, good people uh, God put to, to, to protect me, you know. As I walk those streets day and night, some nights, you know, not wondering, you know, not 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 knowing, uh, and wondering who who who's gonna lend a hand to me next, you know, and I often wondered how did my mother sleep at night, knowing she had a child out there, no supervision. Wow, that even haunts me right now today and just to think about who does that I mean I remember even uh, getting abused when she broke this dresser drawer and uh, beat us with it and uh, I I wanted to be out of her I wanted to go to one of those uh, girl homes but she actually did call one never went through but I was ready uh, to go because I needed to be out of her anger out of her wrath because uh, I was a black girl and I always thought that I was who she said I was this little ugly black bitch and so uh, and I say that with passion because that's the way she said it to me you know I'll never forget that she also told me that uh, if she were my beneficiary and if I died she would cremate me in a party off the rest of my money and I as sad to say or even glad to say I have never ever ever made my mom a beneficiary over my stuff you know because that was just cruel and that just lets me know that you really don't like me I'm your daughter lady but but today the hallelujah story is I am truly the only one of her five children that go and spend time with her and converse with her. You know, I am the one that you hated the most. The one that you put in the wilderness. The one that you didn't care about. The one that I believe if you would have lost me out there in the wilderness, would you have even come? Hey, would, you, would, I, would you even mourn for me? So with that, y'all, I'm going to end with this. Okay? Love on your family. Forgive. Forgiveness is a beautiful thing when you truly forgive. Love covers a multitude of sin. I had to learn that. And I still live it today. That's why at the end of my videos. I say whatever you do. Do it good and do it with love. Do it with love. <laughs> love really does cover a multitude of sin. That's why I can love on my mother. The way that I do. Because I had forgiven her. And in order to forgive her. I had to let all that she did against me I had to let it go so my tears are not sad tears my tears are happy tears just to say I learned unconditional love you know I had a cousin who called me and he said Nita how can you how, how do you do it and I said well how do I do what he said how do you hang with your mother and smile the way you do because I had to tell him baby because I had to forgive her so I'm gonna tell y'all again with everything that you have within you, search love, seek love, find love, because it really does cover a multitude 
of sin. So look here, y'all. I love y'all, and there's nothing you can do about it. Shout out to Jazzy V once again for giving us this challenge. Bye for now, y'all. Bye-bye.